Well, this room here is where it all started, really. Um, Fracture and Neptune first studio. This is the bedroom at my mum, my old bedroom at my mum's house. It's now become my dad's sort of guitar room where he keeps all of his guitars. These are some of my dad's guitars that he's built. I suppose they have had quite a big uh, influence on the on the sort of design of the of the Astrophonica sort of label and the and the font and the kind of just the kind of feel and the ethos almost of yeah. the whole label, isn't it? We were up here in this very room, we were writing the tune called Ventura and we had kind of got um, halfway in, mm -hmm. something like that, mm. and we'd kind of come up with a melody um, that we wanted to put in the tune, it fit it, everything else, the kind of little, everything we'd put in so far, this, this particular sort of little melody really fit, but we just couldn't find anything to do it. It wasn't the right instrument? Couldn't find it, we tried like all plugins and samples and probably even trumpet, everything, mm. until we thought, hang on a sec, your dad plays guitar. Yeah, <laughs> and he's downstairs. It was like making music and then something else happened as well. Um, the word epiphany has been used before, so I think that, you know, it just it clicked. And, um, you know, we wanted to continue along that same vibe, really. Yeah, which we have done for a, a new track called Custom Toe, which again features the exact same guitar and it kind of moves on. It's kind of like the follow on from Ventura mm. almost. Mm. gave me a recording of the kind of bones of the tune. There were a couple of chord changes, mm -hmm. which I think is quite un unusual in that sort of music. Yeah. You don't mm -hmm. often get a, a key change or Not a chord really. change. Yeah. So that gave me something to kind of hang my stuff on and work around. Uh, and that's the sort of pivotal moment in the track, really, the, the, the little change. Mm -hmm. I was very impressed with, with what these guys did with it. You know, after I sort of noodled around for a couple of hours and they'd recorded it and somehow it kind of got put together into uh, yeah, a very interesting piece of music. We recorded direct from AMP uh, with a condenser microphone uh, and like just took loads, did loads of takes and loads of jams and I think what we wanted to do was try and keep it as live as possible, you know, obviously with the software and all of that we had the chance and the ability to chop it all up into tiny little bits and kind of put it all back together but we wanted to try and keep the, the sort it of makes, live sound. Yeah, it still sounds organic almost, yeah. if you start chopping things up too much it can start to sound, you can hear it almost, the live element was key to what the sound was supposed to be and the less we did to it the more effective it sounded. In order to establish a kind of a fake brand identity I, I needed a name and I just thought custom tone partly because the lettering looked nice it's nice having that kind of C at the big, beginning and a couple of T's it sort of flows nicely, you've got, yeah, you've got the C and then the T's and then the rest of the letters are all quite even. You haven't got any letters there which kind of break up the flow of the, of the, the lettering. So um, the name was partly dictated by, by what it looked like. So yeah, all these, although they've got, all got their individual names, they are all custom tone brand. Where I sort of got my first influences from, um, which have heavily influenced our music, mm. was going through my dad's record collection as a young kid. Just pulling out whatever sleeves looked cool, flicking through, and obviously most of it was kind of blues and rock sort of orientated. I think there's a, a very strong similarity between listening to someone else's records and music beginning to speak to you, yeah. and then you follow that path and you start getting equipment that makes you, or allows you to produce that same sound. Ever since I heard, first heard blues records in the early 60s, that was the first music that kind of really spoke to me and I thought, I've got to have a go at that. I think I had a mate at school who had a big brother who had a bunch of records by the likes of Lightning Hopkins and stuff like that. So we listened to that stuff and suddenly our whole world opened up. Whoa, yeah, this is, this is music that's kind of speaking to me. 